but we are back with Saint. <laughs> we had so much fun last time. We had to bring him back for part two. So Saint, listen, um, one of the things I've been wanting to ask you, because you are such a wonderful guy, mighty man of valor, and so we, we appreciate you, we celebrate you, we honor you. How do you stay grounded and centered in a world that glorifies... Explain that mm. uh, the humility of life, staying grounded on a firm and fixed foundation in which you was brought up on. Yeah. So because I wasn't brought up in the whole coochie weed and alcohol, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not what I was brought up in. Yeah. Like, I I was brought up on biblical foundation, wow. and so that's my identity. Mm -hmm. So even though we are surrounded by all that, I don't get caught up in that because that's not what I was brought up in. Mm. I'm grounded on. Biblical principles. Okay. And I thank my I thank my mother and my father for bringing me up in that manner. That's right. They trained me up in the way that I should go. That's right. Train a child. And when he when I got older, I didn't depart from it. You know what? I learned recently that to train uh, in biblical context mm -hmm. means to create to create a desire there for. There we go. Right. Yeah. So they created a desire in you to do the right thing. They did. They truly did. Now, how do you? Because black men, right there, mm -hmm. you you guys deal with a lot here in America, right? Right. How do you win in a system, right, that was set up for your failure? Perseverance. Mm -hmm. Perseverance. Okay. Like we, we have that about us. Okay. Like we can put us in any situation and we're going to overcome. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because biblically, yeah. we are overcomers. Ooh. <laughs> biblically, we are overcomers. Yes. You know I mean? So, therefore... Whatever situation you try to put us in, you try to box us in, we're going to find a way out. Yeah. That, that's just in our nature. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Especially as creators, right? Mm, so yeah. as myself, you, I believe you can put me anywhere on God's green earth because of my creativity. I can find my way. Right. And people I don't understand that we are co-creators with God. There we go. Right? Talk about it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we're co-creators. No like doubt. One of the things I always tell people is that um, divine intervention does not negate human responsibility. Meaning Thanks. just because God Thanks. can do it, right? He puts us, um, that Thanks. we have a responsibility to, to play our part. Correct. Faith what our works is dead. It is. It's it dead. is. Right. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Now, do we live in a misogynistic society? Too misogynistic. Ooh. Mm, too misogynistic. Um, I would say this. My prayer for our people is mm -hmm. to get what I call... We should get to the place of the Messiah, uh, not Messianistic, but the Messiah. Okay, uh, yeah, because I was gonna say instead of misogynistic, say Messianistic. Yeah, there we go. That's what it <laughs> that is. Yeah. Yo, you heard it first on the green sofa. You feel me? <laughs> Messianistic. Yeah. Messianistic. That's where we need to become. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because like I've talked to, I've talked to Muslims, I've talked mm -hmm. to Buddhists, okay. I've talked to people in all races of life. You feel me? In, right. in all religions of life. And they never have a bad thing to say about the Messiah. Wow. You feel okay. what I'm saying? They never have a bad thing to say about him. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if we line our lives up with him, absolutely, I believe this society would be a, 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 a oh man, a great, a greater place. Yeah. yeah. So I know you agree that we live in a misogynistic society. So you would agree then that there are double standards for men and women. Exactly. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. And... Mm. I believe that once once we understand a man's position and role and a woman ah. understands her position and role, we can function properly. You okay. feel me? Because remember, we were we were created together. Biblically, you know, it says, uh, and God said, Let us make man in our image. In uh, our likeness, right? In our likeness. And it, let them have dominion. There we, let them them. Them have dominion. That's right. Not he know? or there she. Let them have let dominion. Let them have dominion with one another. Yeah. So men have to understand that. Like, as you know, a woman, even though she may be considered the weaker vessel, uh -huh. she just she has just as much dominion as you have. Absolutely. You yeah. feel me? Because our spirits were created together. Right. So as men, as we walk around with, with in, in our God mode, uh -huh. she is in her goddess mode. Yeah. You feel me? She's just as powerful as you. Absolutely. Just as powerful as you. You know, it's so funny because it's like growing up, you always heard any time people wanted to excuse the negative behavior or misogynistic, mm -hmm. you know, things right. about guys, they would always say stuff like, oh, boys will be boys. Mm. <laughs> 
But right. it was never girls gonna be girls, right. you know. Right. No, right. it was always right. like boys gonna be boys. So you should just tolerate and deal with whatever negative ramifications come with that. But mm. I think that is such a horrible way to live. It is. It is. So once again, yes, as as we as we look at in our society that we live in right mm -hmm. now, yes, we allow little boys of men to get away with different things. Yeah. That that a woman like we we hold women to a standard of if she's sleeping with this many men, right? She's looked at this way. Oh yeah. But if a man, oh, he just showing his oaks. Yeah, yeah. You feel exactly. what I'm saying? Because it could be like, mm. oh, a guy had forty two sex partners, a, a girl had two. It's like two. Right. It's like <laughs> nah, that's too, too many. Too 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 many. Too too many. Yeah. Nah. And it's like, well, who are you sleeping with? So check it out from the Messiah's point of view. Yeah. From the Messiah's point of view, he holds us to the same standard. Absolutely. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So that's when we go back to the Messiah mystic. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We, Listen, rock we that create one. a new word right here, <laughs> Messiah mystic. Messiah I love mystic. it. They now, rock. you know what? It's funny because nowhere in the Bible does it command a woman to love her husband. She's commanded to respect him. There we go. But Let's the man is Let's commanded to love. There we go. The man is commanded to love. You're just talking about this. Yes. Yeah, this and is beautiful. I feel like um, in order to truly love, uh -huh. you have to be completely vulnerable. Mm, okay. Right? So okay. why is it that men have such a hard time mm. loving and being vulnerable? Because loving, mm. I'm, and I'm talking about like, the, the agape, the, unconditional, right, the truth, sacrificial right. kind of there love, right? People are really scared to dive there. Why is that? Mm, from a man perspective, yeah. we touched on it last week about mm -hmm. um, being too masculine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and, and as protectors, we got to have some type of boldness about us. Okay. You know, we got to have some type of, of strength about us. However, at the same time, we have to understand we have to have that boldness and strength yeah. multiplied in that agape love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because as protectors of the home, like the reason why you're protecting the home because you love those who is in the home. That's right. You're, right. you're just not out here protecting, but you are protecting because there's a love that's there. That's right. And so, yes, it's easy as a man to be what I would like to say. It's, it's easy for us to be just Rawr, you know, like the <laughs> type, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. However, make sure that love is in its proper perspective. Right, that you have a gentle nature, right? There we go. That you can be a lion, you know, uh, shrewd mm. as a lion, but yet gentle there as a go. dove. Gentle men. Yeah. Let's be gentle men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. No. There's a, so I love studying different words. I'm a wordsmith and I love different words, right? right? And so there's a new word that I learned this week called Sawubona. Right, so here's a new word to add to your lexicon. Sawabona. Right, sawabona. Okay. Sawabona means I see you. Mm, I, I like see that. you. Right, like so that. it's very different than our traditional, hey, hello, good morning, how you doing? Right. It's a Zulu sawabona. phrase, right, from right. Africa, mm -hmm. from South Africa, a Zulu phrase that means I see you. Mm. It means I see your integrity. Mm. I see your humanity. I see your dignity. I see you. And I feel like we live in a society where we socialize boys, especially black boys, yeah. right? To mask their emotions, mm -hmm. right? Uh, suppress their pain, mm. conceal their vulnerabilities and Correct. their fears, mm. um, their insecurities. Mm. And so it should come as no surprise that we have these young boys who then come up, you know, grow up to be men Amen. who are uh, spiritually immature. Mm. Right, that they are emotionally unavailable, mm. right? Emotionally mm, right, unavailable, right. and they're also psychologically damaged. But one of the things Talk. I had to really think about is we have trained them to be that way, mm. right? So we mm. have to take responsibility in knowing Correct. that Correct. we train them to be that way. So, how can Mm. Women, men, moms, dads, sisters, brothers, how can we teach boys that masculinity is not mutually exclusive? And what I mean mm. by that is that you can be sensitive, you can be compassionate, right. you can be vulnerable, right. but still keep your sense of manhood. You can still be a man. How do we teach boys that they can do mm. both? It starts with conversation. Okay. You have to be able to communicate it properly. Okay. Right? First, it starts with conversation. Mm. Then it starts with, um, uh, it goes from conversation to um, example. Okay. Right? okay, okay, okay. Conversation to example. So if I'm if I'm teaching my nephew, you know what I mean? If I'm right. teaching my, if I'm explaining to my nephew, hey, this is what it means to be a man. Okay. I also have to demonstrate that. 
Oh yeah, I got, absolutely. He, he He's got to see it. He has to see it, right? And so that's that's where it starts at. Yeah. Like we got to get those two, like we got to make sure those two are locked and loaded first. Yes. Properly communicated, then properly demonstrated, mm -hmm. then we can go from there. Absolutely. Right? Because I believe what happens a lot of times, there's men that can tell you how to be a man, yeah. but they don't demonstrate it. Ah, oh, so, true. So what happens is you hear the guy saying one thing, but you see him doing another. Right. Then that, that leads to mental, like, yeah, little he's boy. confused. Yeah, he's trying to figure out, but you said, and then now you had a man say, well, don't do as I do, do as I say. Yeah. We, and we yeah. don't, yeah, we don't, we should, we should And that's should hypocritical, like, right? You're being a hypocrite because you're saying yeah. one thing and doing another. Correct. And I've learned that what integrity means is to be at one with your word. Ooh. Right? So it, then Sam. you're not a man of integrity if you're Talk saying one it. thing and doing another because young men, they're mm. watching what you do. So born. Sabubona. So, Sabubona. <laughs> there you go. Sabubona. Yes, yeah, I see. I see you. Right, Isn't that a beautiful right. thing? That's a beautiful thing. I see right. you. And and as they say, more is caught than taught. Like, Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So people they would listen to what you say, but they'll pick up more of what you're doing. Absolutely. Mm. And it's all about your mindset mm. being transformed by the renewing of your mind you and go. also switching the paradigm of your thinking. So one of my favorite authors is Carter G. Woodson. Okay. And so I've read The Miseducation of the Negro, I don't know how many times, mm. right? <laughs> Especially in my doctoral mm. studies and things like that. that. But one yeah. of the things I love to tell people is that, uh, and this is from The Miseducation of Carter G. Woodson, it says, if you can control a man's thinking, mm. you do not have to worry about his actions. When you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. Okay. If you make a man feel he is inferior, you do not have to compel him to accept an uh, inferior status. Okay. If you make a man think he is an outcast, mm -hmm. you do not have to you do not have to order him to the back door. He will seek it for himself. Mm. And if there is no back door, his very nature will demand it. Mm. Right? That's... Talking about our mindset. Yeah. That whatever you're thinking is what you're manifesting. Mm. As a man thinking so is he. Yeah. Mm, okay. I that's can something that. else, right? Yeah, that's that's good. What do you think about that? <sighs> man. Okay, so uh, when God said, let us make man in our image okay. and our likeness, mm -hmm. right? Paul talks about it in the New Testament. He says, we have the mind of Christ. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So men and women alike, it starts mentally. Mm -hmm. It starts mentally, right? And so... It's so important. We was talking about mental health last week. Oh, right? yeah. Absolutely. Man, it's, it's so important. We need to have messiah messianistic <laughs> mindset. Yes. Messianistic mindset, right? right? Messiah, like, the way that the Messiah thought was beautiful. Yeah. Right? It, it was beautiful. Man and woman can apply messianistic mindsets. Right. Man, and... Lord. And people don't understand, if you knew how powerful the mind was, exactly. and if you just knew how powerful black men are, and, mm. and, and so that's why there is such an attack on you, because Talk I think it. the rest of the world knows just how powerful you are. That's true. And I think that's true. when we start to understand that and start to really walk in that, mm -hmm. then we'll change the game. Change why is it that most mm -hmm. more guys don't know about the type of power they hold? Mm. It can be a fearful thing. Mm. It, a lot, a lot of it is fear. Okay. You feel me? A lot of it is uh, fear. Uh, so, because of because of that, that uh, them not understanding how powerful they really are. Yeah. Instead of walking in faith, they walk in fear. Yeah. You right? Yeah. And but when you walk in faith, this this is something beautiful. Like God created everything from a mindset. Oh when, yeah. When he said, "Let there be spoken. light." That was, it was it was it was thought first. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When he created the heavens and the earth. It was it was a thought before it became a reality. Yes. Right? When he created us in his image and likeness, he he thought about us. Yeah. Right? And then we was manifesting. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? So it's it's so powerful for men to understand how powerful your mind is. Yeah. And to get that mental that mental state right. Yeah. Right. And we can really walk around as gods and goddesses and men. Like people went to go see the Black Panther movie. You seen how they was moving in Wakanda? Ooh. You feel what I'm saying? I'm Wakanda forever. Oh, man. Yo, <laughs> I'm Wakanda forever. Beautiful. Yo, beautiful. Yes. Like, we have, we we can do the same thing here on this earth. Absolutely. Right here in, in this land that we live in. 
if we get our mind stay right. Yeah, and you know what? Let me tell you why I was so excited about the whole Black Panther, you know, mm -hmm. this Marvel movie based off of this, you know, land of Wakanda, right? Correct. First of all, you have this supremely abundant, sovereign country called right. Wakanda, right? That Correct. is t uh, totally self-sustaining. Correct. It was on the leading edge of technology, mm -hmm. and it was untainted by colonization, mm -hmm. unintended. <laughs> Correct. So you Correct. got these gorgeous chocolate sisters like Lupita Nyong'o, right, who plays Nakia, right. and uh, Denai Guerrera, beautiful, right, right. Who, who plays Okoya, right, right, and she is the general of the the Dermalage, which is like their military regime, Correct. right. So their whole deal was to protect and to preserve the sovereignty of Wakanda. Mm. Right? That's such a beautiful mm, thing. Is, and beautiful. I love the dichotomy you had between the men and the women because it was like the women were fierce and they were Correct. feminine all at the very at the same, same time. time. Right. They were fierce beautiful and example. feminine. Yeah, all Correct. at the same time. There was no conflict, a mm -hmm. compromise between that. But then you had these gorgeous men. Mm. Like right. Killmonger. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that Killmonger, <laughs> he was something else. But you had these men who were like, they're, they're, they're they're confident in their right. voice and they're Correct. you know they were powerful mm. and they were leaders and Correct. they were communicators and more importantly they were kings mm. right they were kings right. and so you know what the the best part mm. um about that whole movie was yeah. that it's not really a movie like mm. if you ever go to Africa that is what Africa is That's really like is. right that right. is it's not this fairy tale comic book kind of place no Wakanda mm. is a real place it's called Africa gotcha. right Dope. it's not fictional we are superheroes I believe that <laughs> I believe that. I tell people like when yeah. I remember when I first saw the movie for the first time and I was telling people like y'all that that's really what Africa is like we are super superheroes. we are superheroes right Dope. we are uh this is not what we do this is who we, this are. Is who we are there we go yes it's not what we do mm. it's so it's who we are we are that. the curators of culture correct we are the pioneers of innovation correct right? right we come from the most abundant wealthiest richest uh continent mm -hmm. on the face of the earth That's true black people That's true. are the definition of royalty we are the definition of royalty. I believe that. Civilization and humankind was born there in Africa. That's dope. It all That's started dope. there. That's our roots. It, right. It's That's all started roots. there. Everything right. you mix with black mm -hmm. becomes black, right? Mm -hmm. So you implant a seed in a woman, y'all have a black child. I don't Correct. care if it's in an no Asian matter. woman, Correct. a white woman, yeah. <laughs> a Mexican we, we are woman. The, we are the original men. We are. You are the original man, Correct. and that's why people don't understand how powerful you are. Mm. Not only that, they still trying to figure out how we built those pyramids. True that. True that. Well, they still trying to figure that out. You know what one of our uh, greatest superpowers is? Mm. Our melanin. Mm. Everybody want it. I like that. <laughs> it's something that I we like have that. that everybody wants. Melanin. Yo, and you know what's beautiful about those pyramids is that even, like, they don't know how we built those pyramids. Yeah. And even though I wasn't physically there to build it with yeah. them, but that however they did it, mm -hmm. it's in me. It's in you. It's in me. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's the type of power we walk with. Yeah. We walk with that power like we have pyramid power. Yeah, you absolutely. Don't to, and you don't have to physically build a pyramid, mm -hmm. but you can build other things. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? And so I'm yeah. always telling guys, I'm like, you don't understand how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. But that's why there's such an attack on black men because they Talk know. You know Talk what I mean? About it. Right. They know. They're saying by like 2040 or whatever, like this whole country will be mostly brown. Mm. Right? Really? Yeah. Okay. Right? Because right. we have the dominant genes. Okay. I, because I anything we mix with, we make more of ourselves. Yo. Right? You so know, it's annihilation on a whole nother level. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> so biblically in the book of Exodus, okay. it, it talked it talked about when um the children of Israel when they was in Egypt, mm -hmm. right? They multiplied so much. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. that, that Pharaoh was like, Man, like this is it's too many of them. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That we have that. We have that gene. We we don't die, but we really we multiply. multiply, right? We really Who's that, baby kids? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we is. don't die, we, we don't multiply. Die, we multiply. Yeah. So no matter how many of us you put in the ground, we seize, man. Yeah. We gonna we gonna grow. We Absolutely. gonna grow some more. You know what I'm saying? So all that stuff that they doing, they trying to you know kill us off the earth, man. It's it, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. You know what? There's a gentleman that I really admire in this generation, mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick. Talk about him. 
Listen, because Cap. he was willing to risk his family, mm -hmm. his career, his Correct. money, his celebrity, his Correct. stardom. He was willing to risk everything Damn. for something he truly believed in. Mm -hmm. So I have so much respect for that brother because Martin Luther King says the ultimate measure of a man is not how he stands in moments of convenience and comfort, but how he stands in moments of challenge and controversy. That's dope. Right? Yeah. And so That's he was dope. in the ultimate, you know, right. ultimate controversy. Correct. Where they tried to strip him of everything, mm -hmm. pulled him from the league. And hold nine yards. Everything. Right. But the brother persevered. He persevered. He I'm persevered. so glad he got that 60 million. Man, he persevered. Yeah. And so that let that be example to all our our young men out yeah. there to let them to let y'all know. Look, you don't have to be a victim of your circumstance. That's right. Colin Kaepernick, he wasn't a victim of no, his circumstance. Wasn't. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He was he he was a uh, he was victorious. Absolutely. He was victorious. He was an overcomer of his circumstances. Absolutely. You dig? He was willing to put everything on the line, he lose was. everything, but he gained so much support in oh, the process. Man. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And Absolutely. people and people backed him. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? People backed him. You know what I mean? So don't walk in fear. Think about if he would have moved in fear. Yeah. We wouldn't be talking about Cap no, right now. You we wouldn't be. You feel what I'm saying? But the brother stepped out on faith and said, yo, I have to do this for my people. Exactly. And see, the right. thing is, it wasn't even about him. He was doing it for the people who don't have a voice. There we go. Right? right. Because he, he's sitting right. in the lack of luxury. He's a millionaire. Correct. You know, he's a starting quarterback. He, right. was, he was in the prime of his career. Correct. And you know who else reminded me of that? Muhammad Ali. Oh yeah. Back in the day when when he when he uh refused to go to the war. Oh yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. He he stood like in in his prime of his career. Mm -hmm. He lost three and a half years of his boxing career yes. to make a stand and say, man, them people didn't do nothing to me in Vietnam, Vietnam or whatever he said. Right. Yeah. I ain't you going know? out there. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> going out there. And they ain't never called me a nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he stood up for that. And when it was all said and done, like people was able to see the example of man, we you know we can really stand out yeah. here, like we can really do this. Absolutely, man. yeah, I have so much respect for that brother. No so doubt. Colin Kaepernick, we rocking with you, no Cause doubt. I was boycotting the NFL. I feel you. I don't even own a TV, so that was <laughs> <laughs> so that but was pretty easy. You know, yeah, you but no, I was like I'm standing with this brother because yeah. if he'll speak up for you know these young men who who are being killed in the streets like stray dogs, right? Yeah, right. Like, that's mm. the type of brother, that's the type of man I can submit to. Mm. Just so you know. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Check it out. So, you, you said that. All right. Yeah. So, let's let's talk about submission. Let's yeah. talk about submission. Oh, let's get into it. Right? I like that word. Because we, we talked, we, we brought this up early in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so, all right. So, biblically, so... It, it told us it says husbands. No, actually, actually when it when it breaks down the the biblical foundation of the family, he first starts with the woman. Mm -hmm. He say, "Woman, be submissive to your husband." Yeah. Then he goes and say, "Husband, love your wife like Christ loved the church." That's right. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. So, so let me let me ask you in in the form of submission. What is your view on submission? You know what? Like, okay, so I grew up in a two two parent household like right, you, right. right? And my mom is a very submissive woman, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, I remember having a conversation when I was an adult with my mother, just saying, mom, you know, like, you, you just seem so submissive and growing up. And she was like, I ain't got nothing to worry about. Your dad made sure I didn't have a care in the world. Oh. She was like, I never have to worry about if the bill's going to get paid. I never have to worry about if I was safe. I never had to worry about if somebody was going to run in my home, you know, yeah. if your dad wasn't going to protect me. She was like, I didn't have any of those worries. So it's easy to submit to a man like that. Mm. I was like. Okay, right? So when I think yeah. about submission, I think about that, where you have this man who's taking care of you, providing for you. He's been your priest, your protector, gotcha. right? Gotcha. Everything. That's the type of a man that a woman can submit to. Gotcha. And the thing is, I can submit to a man who submitted to something else, which go. is God. Hey, there Right? Go. If he ain't submitted there unto go. God, then what right. am I submitting to? Correct. Right? So if he submitted unto God and God only wants the best for me, he says, Beloved, I wish above all mm -hmm. things that you prosper and be in good health, health even mm -hmm. as your so soul, soul prospers. Let's talk right? About it. Right. That's right? Beautiful. Yeah. So if, if that's the type of God that I serve, uh -huh. and this is the type of God that my man serves, Listen. How can we lose? How how can we lose? How can he we he, lose? he can God get the Lord. submission and everything else he wants. That's a God <laughs> He yeah. can get it all. <laughs> okay, he can get grits, submission, <laughs> head, all that. 
Okay, Yo, that's, that's how, be, hey, that hey, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah he is. This yeah. is beautiful. Because I think I we think that submission it. is a bad word. Right. But the problem is, is because women are submitting the, to the wrong type of dudes. Oh. Wow. Right? So you submit to these cats who ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out, right? Mm. He ain't got nothing to offer you, nor him, you know what I'm saying, nor himself. Right. And so then you mad and you, you know what I'm saying, you having these uh, sessions with your girlfriends, these, you know, male bashing sessions, and you mad about life because you submitted to the wrong man. Man, that's beautiful. You're submitting to the wrong thing. Absolutely. Mm. Because that's listen, the right kind of guy right. wants you to prosper. He, y'all a team. Correct. He wants you to do well. Correct. Right? And if, if God says that, you know, you should love your wife as Christ loves love the, the church, church, right? and Christ is willing to die, mm -hmm. listen, mm. I'll live for him if he died yeah. for me. All right? See, yo. that's the kind of husband I won't live yo. for him. I will live for you well, if you're willing die. to die for me. Well, that's revelation right there. Yeah. Yo, my sisters and my brothers, this, this is, you can't get this nowhere else. Only you on a dream. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Only on the green. Yeah. So, yeah, so is submission beautiful. is a beautiful thing when you're right. submitted to the right guy. Absolutely. Mm. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. Now, from a man perspective, yeah. right? Like you said, it's important for the man to be submissive to something greater than him. That's right. Which is the creator himself. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. And so I always say it's, it's, it will be easier for a woman to submit to a man mm -hmm. if she sees that he's submissive Absolutely. and following the lead of the creator. That's right. Correct? That's because right. Because it's order. It is order. It's order. You got God, and you got the man, and you got the woman, and you have the child. Yes. And so all those things flow if you if it's if it's flowing properly. That's right. If it's in divine alignment. Divine alignment. I love yeah. that. I love that saying. Yes. Yo, this is beautiful. <laughs> this well, is beautiful. You know what? You list, you you mentioned nigga earlier, right? Right. I love that word. Okay. I so do too. I tell like. me, like, are you? Is it is it a term of endearment? Because you know, of course, it's it's one of those things that was always mm -hmm. used against us, Correct. right? Correct. But, of course, Correct. in our rap culture and things like that, we've taken that word, we've taken mm -hmm. the power away from that word, Correct. and we use it in a form that says, you know what, mm -hmm. this is a term of endearment. Now, do mm -hmm. you see it as a term of endearment, or is it like, this is still us kind of um, keeping ourselves in bondage by using it? Mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings about it. Okay, so I can understand, like, I was listening to a interview by Dr. Maya Angelou. Okay. And, and basically, she was saying how she doesn't like the word because how it was used when, how she was growing up. Yeah. Right? I get it. But when I was growing up, listening to hip hop, yeah. it didn't seem like anything was wrong with the word. Right? right of it, course. Yeah. Yo, what up, my nigga? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's how we use it. We, we use it on one another. Um, not as the white man used it towards us. Right. Right? And so... I still use the word in certain settings. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. I still use the word. Um, is it a form of endearment? To some people it is, and I got to respect that. Yeah, yeah. I got to respect that when, when people uh, say, man, I don't like for you to use that word around me. Okay, I can respect that. Yeah. Right? But also, but I need you to respect in the same time that I do use the word. Yeah. You feel what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Yeah, so if we can agree on that level then we good. I won't use it around you, but understand, I still use it though. Yeah. I just won't use it around you and we can walk. Yeah. I yeah. remember uh, maybe one time when I was younger, somebody calling me out my name. I don't even know what the situation was. And mm -hmm. you know, me going to my dad like, Daddy, uh -huh. this nigga called me up. <laughs> you yeah. know? And my dad said, it's not what they call you. It's what you answer to. Mm. And I was like, oh, so that was a different mm. perspective, right? right? That it didn't matter what they call me. The only thing that mattered is what I answer to. So, see, I don't have to answer to bitch or hoe or whatever, that's though. Dope. You know what I'm saying? Because right, right. that's not what I am. Mm. So, if I don't answer to it, guess what? You saying it, you just speaking words. Mm. Right? It doesn't, right. doesn't affect me. It doesn't change right. my train of thought. It doesn't change my day. I'm still go on. <laughs> you now, know? Now, does it, does, it keep us in, uh, does it keep us in bondage? Now, from a personal perspective, mm -hmm. it hasn't kept me in bondage. Okay. Right? So when my homies say, yo, we saying what up, money? Like, I don't feel like I'm in bondage when somebody calls me that. Yeah. You feel me? Now, I've I've had uh, white individuals okay. that I know personally okay. that have used the word like, say, what's up, money? You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
And because I knew them mm-hmm. and because we associated in that space, yeah. I didn't take it personal. Okay. Right? But I've also had a white person use it in the negative aspect yeah, yeah. as well. So to me, it's the content of the matter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It, it, it's really it's really the content of the matter. So mm-hmm. um, as as black people, we have this this thing where we like, yo. No white pe- no white person should be able to use the word <laughs> yeah. like whatsoever. Yeah. But as black people, we feel like we can use the word on each other. Of you course. know what I'm saying? But the white man, he has no reason to use that word. So it, it is it is a, a conflict. It's a small conflict. Yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, it's a small but I, I use the word. Yeah. I use it. So So how do you feel about pop culture right now where, you know, women are called bitches and hoes mm. and yeah. you know, every video is like you better have a, a big beauty Puerto Rican girl twerking you know what i'm saying it's just like how do you feel about how they are i guess um showing women Mm -hmm. in these videos okay so i would prefer us to address one another as gods or goddess kings or queens Mm -hmm. i don't think you can go wrong with those terms Mm -mm. not at all right and so when i look at these videos and i see these women uh exploiting themselves in a way now as an artist, as a creator, I look at it as art, right? Okay. It's art. It's like, yo, it's it's art. The ladies are beautiful, whatever. However, the rapper has the responsibility to not degrade them, though. Okay. By using the B's and the H's, the O's yeah. and the sluts and all that. Like, like, so women women have to understand, like, look, I'm an artist. I'm in this video. Okay. You're seeing my body is all, you know, it's good. But yeah. yet... In the lyrics, don't degrade me in the lyrics, though. Yeah. Because it, it, it becomes all confusing. Absolutely. When you see the model in the video, but yet the rapper is saying this, this, and this. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you kind of like, dang, you know? And so, with black men or with men in general do, when they go out and mm-hmm. they see a woman in that light, yeah. you know what I mean? First thing they think about is the Jay-Z lyrics. Right. You feel what I'm okay. saying? The first thing they think about is the lyrics that associate the women like, yo, but I saw you. I saw someone like you in this video, mm-hmm. and these lyrics apply to what I see, and that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And it's like, nah, like treat them as a queen. Absolutely. Can, can we can we love on them as queens? Can we respect them as queens? Can Absolutely. we lift them up as goddess? That's what I'm about. That's true. Yeah, that's what I'm about. That's true. Queens and goddess. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, that's such a beautiful thing because I I feel like in this in this culture um, there's a lot of things that uh-huh. we're seeing right. Correct. Because I always tell people you got to be mindful about what you're hearing and what Correct. you're seeing right because they have a huge effect. We already know that uh, le- life and death are in the power, power of the tongue, tongue. Correct. right? And they Correct. that level will eat the fruit thereof. So you keep on speaking a certain thing, mm-hmm. that's what you will see manifest because Correct. words you know we are speaking spirits and so right. our words have power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we got to start speaking the right things over each other. So, all right, I would say this. As men, right, I was having this discussion. Okay. And I, I told I told my homie, I said, let's not act like Jay-Z didn't cheat on Beyonce. Oh, ooh. You feel me? Ooh. Let, let's not act like this, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we call Beyonce the Queen Bee. Yeah. You feel me? Okay. And so we have to understand that as men... We can't be out here making our queens look crazy. That's out here. right. We we just we can't do it. As as men, I understand. We have that nature about us, like mm-hmm. we were talking about that King David syndrome. Yeah. That we see Bathsheba's and we be like, man. Right. But the way that we honor our queens, right? Yeah. Is to be faithful towards them. The same mm-hmm. way the creator is faithful with us. Amen. Like God is not unfaithful towards us. No, he's even, not. Even when we are unfaithful towards him. Yeah. Like he stays faithful towards us. So as men, yeah. we can't be sh- straying away from the house and then expecting the woman who has carried your seed. Oh, wow. And is carrying your seed. Yeah. Bringing forth life from your loom. Come on, yeah. y'all. We have, we, like as men, we, we have to treat our women with more respect, yeah. right? And I'm preaching to myself too. Like yeah. we have to treat our women with more respect. Uh, Malcolm X said this. He said our greatest, and he said possession. But I understood what he was coming from. Yeah. Our greatest possession as black men is our black women. Ooh. Think about I love that. It. I love Think it. about that. They are our greatest jewel. Yeah. They are our, not a diamond, not this. The black woman. Yeah. We lift them up. 
Think about it. They the ones who give life. Yeah. Right. They the ones who give life. A diamond can't give you life. That's right. A diamond can shine nice on you, but it can't give you life like our woman. Wow. We appreciate you for that. Mm. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much, Saint. Ah, on the green sofa. Thank you guys for joining us. We had a wonderful time. We honor you. We celebrate you, black men. Thank you.